PM assures Islam will continue to be religion of federation. Press freedom in Malaysia is not free pass to spread lies. Greetings and salam Malaysia Madani. You're watching updates at noon, the Sunday edition with me, Nur Zamri. Now the news in full. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim has given his assurance that Islam continues to be upheld as the religion of the Federation besides providing sufficient allocation for the organisation of Islamic knowledge programmes. At the same time, he also assured that every non-Muslim citizen's rights would be preserved and they would always be treated with respect and have a comfortable life. Datuk Sri Anwar also said the irrational prejudices and hostility towards Islam that occurred in the world was due to certain parties who had superficial thoughts about Islam. Di Malaysia ini kita ada Islam sebagai agama persekutuan tetapi peraturan itu melarang umat Islam menghina atau mencerca pahaman agama-agama lain. Dan mudah-mudahan kita dapat kembangkan semangat yang sedemikian. Sebab itu bila berlakunya kebakaran Al-Quran di Sweden Selain daripada mengecam Saya telah mengambil keputusan Untuk Mengarahkan jabatan-jabatan Dan penerbit Al-Quran Untuk menerbitkan Dalam semua bahasa Termasuk dalam bahasa Sweden Sejuta Al-Quran untuk disebarkan di Malaysia dan di seluruh dunia the Prime Minister was speaking at the Association of the 63rd Malaysian International Al-Quran Recitation and Memorization Assembly, MTHQA, at the Kuala Lumpur World Trade Center last night. Meanwhile, the MTHQA involves two competitions, namely Quran Recitation and Memorization. Team Perpaduan Teras Malaysia Madani, MTHQA will convene until the 24th of August. More than 70 participants from 52 countries are taking part in this year's competitions. Of the total, 36 representing 27 countries participate in the recital category, while the remaining are in the memorization category. Malaysia is being represented by Mohammed Kaim Nizar Sarimi, who is visually impaired from Kelantan and Nur Hidayah Abdul Rahman from Terengganu in the recital category. Ahmad Iqmal Muhammad Ridwan from Johor and Dian Karisma Muhammad Jafar from Sabah represent the country in the memorization category. The families of the seven victims of the aircraft crash at the country highway near Bandar Elmina, Shahalam, qualified to receive Social Security Organization Prokeso benefits. Human Resources Minister V. Siva Kumar said under the schemes provided through the existing acts, the beneficiaries qualified to receive death benefits of up to 2,000 ringgit and survivor's pension payments. In a statement, Sivakuma said he had instructed Pekeso to take proactive measures by checking the qualifying status of the 10 victims involved in the crash under the provision of Pekeso coverage immediately after receiving news of the tragedy. Based on the checks, the families of six victims qualify under the Employees' Social Security Act 1969, subsection Act 4, while another qualified under two provisions, Act 4, and the Self-Employment Social Security Act 2017. Perkeso has also met death benefit payments to the families of three victims who provided initial information while the payments to the families of the remaining four victims are pending. Therefore, Sivakuma urged Perkeso staff in offices in the localities of the families to be prepared to provide the necessary aid.
Dan menyewai semangat kesetiaan kepada raja dan negara program which is held in conjunction with the Perak State Level National Month Celebration may be expanded nationwide in the future. Speaking to reporters after the program last night, Communication and Digital Minister Fahmi Fadil said such a program should not be limited to schools but should also involve residents' associations as well as neighbourhood communities. However, as a starting point, Fami sees the implementation of the program at the school level as the right step. Saya akan bincang dengan Menteri Pendidikan untuk lihat apa yang boleh kita lakukan di peringkat negeri-negeri dan akhirnya kejohanan di peringkat kebangsaan dan ada beberapa perkara yang perlu kita pertimbangkan termasuk keberangkatan Dulia Maha Mulia Sri Parika Baginda yang dipertuan agung. Last night, the Sultan of Perak, Sultan Nazri Muizuddin Shah graced the program which was held at the Perak Darul Rizwan building in Ipoh. No, at a separate event, Fami said the freedom of the press and speech guaranteed in Malaysia does not equate to freedom to slander and spread misinformation. Speaking to reporters after launching the Astro hashtag Demi Negaraku and home of Kiss campaign, he said the government would also disallow the spread of information that is slanderous in nature or matters searching on 3R, race, religion and royalty that can be manipulated by any party. Dan itu adalah jaminan. Dan pada masa yang sama, secara amnya saya boleh kata kita tidak boleh benarkan sekiranya ada maklumat yang salah, yang berunsur fitnah ataupun menyentuh isu 3R untuk dipermainkan oleh mana-mana pihak. Jadi walaupun ada kebebasan media, tapi kita tidak ada kita tidak bebas untuk memfitnah ataupun menyebar maklumat yang salah. He was asked to comment on the perception that the government is impeding the freedom of speech and the media following the restriction imposed by the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, MCMC, against several news portals. The government is studying the best method to reduce national dependence on raw sugar supply, which is currently totally imported from abroad. Acting Domestic Trade and Cost of Living Minister Dato Armizan Muhammad Ali said this was to overcome problems with the supply of raw materials that could be affected by factors beyond Malaysia's control, such as geopolitics and natural disasters. Yang ada dalam negara ada refinery. Okay, perprosesan gula itu. Tapi raw sugar itu bekalannya sepenuhnya daripada luar. So, sebelum ini kita mempunyai bekalan daripada beberapa negara. Tetapi disebabkan faktor-faktor tertentu, sebahagian negara yang telah membuat keputusan sama ada untuk sementara atau dalam tempoh panjang untuk menghentikan ekspor gula. He also said that importing raw sugar from abroad was done at the cost was much lower than produced it domestically. However, he said the government need to retain this strategy and spend a bit more because what's important is that the supply of sugar is not disrupted. Coming up in our foreign front, Switzerland faces shortage of essential medicines. The Eastern Theater Command of the Chinese People's Liberation Army on Saturday launched joint air and sea patrols and military exercises of the Navy and Air Force around the island of Taiwan. According to Xi Yi, spokesman for the command, the patrols and exercises aim to train the coordination of military vessels and airplanes and their ability to seize control of air and sea spaces and test the armed forces' ability to fight in real combat conditions. She said the military operations serve as a stern warning to the collision of Taiwan separatists with external forces and their provocations. Upon receiving the orders, the PLA Navy rocketed air forces swiftly dispatched units to the designated positions to form an island in Circumman. During the operation, during search and counterattack of submarines, joint blockade and cruise range counterattack exercises based on real scenes, real cases and actual combat were carried out. 
Swiss pharmaceutical company Pharmacy said the country is facing a shortage of essential medicines challenged by smaller market size, increasing input costs on pharmaceutical raw materials and Russia-Ukraine conflict. Switzerland, a traditional pharmaceutical powerhouse, is home to the world's largest pharmaceutical companies as well as hundreds of biotech companies. However, Switzerland has recently suffered an acute shortage of essential medicines. According to the Swiss Federal Office of Public Health, the country faces shortages of antibiotics, painkillers and essential drugs for treating chronic diseases. One of the reasons for this is that many medicinal glass bottles in the European pharmaceutical market come from Ukraine. Since the Russia-Ukraine conflict broke out, the shortage of medical glass bottles in Switzerland has also affected the production of essential medicines. Hurricane Hillary continued on a steady path toward Mexico's Baja California Peninsula on Saturday as a powerful hurricane that officials warned could bring potentially catastrophic flooding there and to parts of the U.S. southwest. The storm weakened on Saturday from a powerful Category 4 to Category 3 on the five-step Suffer Simpson scale, still deemed capable of devastating damage, with hurricane conditions expected to continue along the Baja California coast through Sunday. Mexican authorities predicted intense rainfall and electrical storms with a risk of flooding along the Pacific coast and warned residents to take necessary precautions. The storm is expected to weaken to a tropical storm before reaching southern California and southern Nevada, with heavy rainfalls and flooding still possible. Residents and workers in the Mexican tourist resort of Cabo San Lucas have put up protective boarding and laid thousands of sandbags as the large waves began crashing ashore. Military personnel were seen patrolling the beach in the city, a popular destination for both Mexican and foreign tourists. The northern Canadian city of Yellowknife evacuated most of its roughly 20,000 residents due to a lush approaching blaze on Friday and Saturday. People left their homes and property behind to seek refuge in neighbouring provinces due to the threat of the creeping of fire cutting off land exits and potentially doing worse harm. Residents and tourists drove away on roads flanked by fire and smoke, while local and federal authorities flew out some others. The massive blaze threatening Yellowknife, the northwest territory's capital city, made little headway on Friday as firefighters held it back. However, strong winds could still blow the blaze toward the city and it could reach the outskirts this weekend, the territory's fire service had cautioned. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau convened a meeting of the Incident Response Group discussed the fires on Thursday. The group is compromised of senior officials and ministers and meets in cases of crisis. Still to come in sports, Sweden clinches fourth bronze women's World Cup medal. A packed stadium welcomed Brazil forward Neymar Jr. to Al Hilal on Saturday as the Saudi Pro League side took on Al Fifa at home. Fans rolled as the Brazilian entered the stadium to lights, music, and pyrotechnics in a warm reception to the new star player. After being introduced to fans in a flashy pre-game show, Neymar watched from the stands as his new club, Al-Hilal, unfortunately was held to a one-all draw against al Fayha. al Fayha were first on the board when Jojko Simorod fed Fashion Sakala, who drove it in to score off the right post in the 15th minute. Abdullah Al-Hamdan, however, managed to equalise for Al-Hilal five minutes later when he positioned himself perfectly to score off a rebound. The 31-year-old Neymar, who is not expected to feature in the match, signed a two-year contract with the Riyadh base club on Tuesday after spending six years with Paris Saint-Germain in a deal reportedly worth about 90 million euros, equivalent to about 98 million US dollars. 
Sweden picked up their fourth Women's World Cup bronze medal on Saturday after beating co-host Australia 2-0 in the third place playoff match. The Swedish ranked third in the world were awarded a penalty in the 28th minute after a video assistant referee VAR review showed Australia's Claire Hunt, Clip Stina, Blackstina's heels and Fridolina Rolfo slaughtered home the resulting spot kick. Sweden captain Kosovare Aslani doubled the lead just after the hour mark, riffling a sweet strike from the edge of the penalty area beyond goalkeeper Mackenzie Arnold following another quick counter-attack. While disappointed to sign off at the World Cup with another defeat, the Matilda still achieved their best result at the tournament, having never previously gone beyond the quarter-final stage. The tournament has set an attendance records at PAC fan zones around the country and two of Australia's matches became the most watched programs on domestic commercial TV in 20 years. The next clash is expected to be between England and Spain in the final action. Coco Gauff beat world number one Iga Swatek for the first time in eight meetings on Saturday. She advanced to the Cincinnati Open final as the American team just level continues to rise ahead of the upcoming U.S. Open. Gauff seeded seven will be the heavy favorite in Sunday's final when she faces unseeded Czech Karolina Bochova, who beat a misfiring world number two Arena Sabalenka 6-7, 6-3, 6-2. Throughout their seven prior encounters, which included last year's French Open final, Swatek consistently dismantled Goff by overpowering the American with her greater weaponry and piling relentless pressure on Goff's forehand until it inevitably collapsed. However, Goff has certainly elevated her game since the start of the U.S. hardcore swing, winning the title in Washington, D.C., making the coaches of the Canadian Open and now reaching her first final of a WTA 1000 event. It would also be a first WTA 1000 final for Machova, who will make her top 10 debut after the tournament. Francesco Bagnaia led from start to finish to win the Austrian Grand Prix sprint for Ducati on Saturday, while Brad Binder celebrated his new contract with Red Bull KTM by finishing second at the home circuit. His full sprint victory of the season saw running world champion Bagnaia extend his lead over Jorge Martin in the Riders' Championship to 46 points ahead of Sunday's race at the Red Bull Ring in Spielberg. Martin finished third after starting 12th on the grid. Bagnaya claimed pole position in qualifying earlier on Saturday and he rocketed off the line along with Binder. But Maverick Vinales, who qualified second, was slow to accelerate off the front row and rapidly fell down the order. Vinales was then involved in a collision on the first turn, which saw VR46 Racing's Marco Bisucci drawn off his bike in a crash. The collision involved multiple riders with Fabio Guardararo. Jehan Zarko and Miguel Oliveira also crashing. Martin made up several positions and as a Primark Racing fighter, fought for the third place. He clipped Luca Marini, who lost balance and slid off the circuit. Marini's mentor and MotoGP great Valentino Rossi was watching from trackside and the Italian had his head in his hands as both VR46 racing riders did not finish. Stewart reviewed the incidents and said Martin was not at fault allowing the Spaniard to finish third. An inspiring 11-year-old girl created a collection of Balkan folklore Barbie dolls using high-quality traditional costumes. Now let's take a look at this and many more amazing stories in the world around us. You Can Be Anything is the Barbie doll motto and for 11-year-old Esma Jiva from Bosnia, that means becoming an artist that creates traditional Balkan divas. 
from her home in Sarajevo. Isma makes high-quality Balkan costumes, headdresses and decorative aprons for her collection of Barbie dolls, hoping to create interest in her folklore Barbie and riding on the wave of the new and highly publicised Barbie movie. Emma started her project more than a month ago after seeing poor-quality dolls in a souvenir shop whose badly conceived traditional clothes were glued on. She tried to improve the appearance and finally succeeded after several attempts. Raised in a family of devoted amateur folklore dancers, Esma has learned a lot about Bosnia's multi-religious traditions and is herself a member of a local folklore group. She is very precise when making dolls dressed in traditional Muslim, Christian, Orthodox and Catholic costumes and takes great care over hairstyles and miniature jewellery. She receives orders for her dolls daily and she has sent them to Bulgaria, the Czech Republic, Turkmenistan, Norway, Britain and other countries. In Argentina's capital, Buenos Aires, a coffee shop owner, Dario Mas, has found an inventive way to navigate escalating inflation. As the apparel blue doll exchange, the most common used by residents to access dollars and skirt currency controls, continues to rise, Mas uses a special machine to print the daily exchange rate on due coffee. Yo de cuando empezó a subir el billete y todos los días grabamos distintos tipos de imágenes en la máquina y decidimos jugar un poquito con la humorada de, de la suba y la baja del billete y lo grabamos en la taza del café. The machine can also print different images onto coffee, including of football players like Lionel Messi, basketball players, or even specific images that customers can ask them to print, such as personal projects or logos. Mas posted an image of the coffee with a parallel dollar exchange rate on the social media, which quickly became viral and attracted new customers to the shop. Poland recently held its biggest military parade since the Cold War took in Warsaw as a NATO member country flexes its muscle in what the government hopes will be both the message to Moscow and to voters ahead of elections in October. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has made boosting the armed forces a priority for Poland's ruling nationalist law and justice. And with the election campaign in full swing, the huge display of military hardware provided a change for burnish their security credentials. Marching on Armed Forces Day, parade on the anniversary of Poland's victory over the Red Army in the battle in Warsaw in 1920, with 2,000 soldiers from Poland and other NATO countries with 200 items of military equipment and 92 aircraft. The military equipment on display included M1A1 Abrams tanks bought from the United States, South Korean K2 tanks and K9 self-propelled Hwitsas, as well as HIMARS rocket launchers, Patriot air defense systems and police-made Bursic infantry fighting vehicles. Amid the scorching summer heat in Japan, seals of artificial flowers frozen in blocks of ice are flourishing. A Tokyo-based company, Anoda Shoten, opened its ice flower studio last year after the COVID-19 pandemic depressed sales of its main ice wholesale business and prompted it to pivot in seek other ways to use ice. To make the displays, a large container is first filled with tap water before flowers and other decorative objects are arranged inside. The liquid is then slowly frozen over a period of around two weeks to give it a transparent look. この中のものをきれいに見せるためにすごくゆっくり時間をかけてじっくり凍らせて梱包して皆さんのもとにお届けしてます Company president Wataru Onada said customers who are mostly online based buy the ice displays to give as gifts for occasions such as birthdays, anniversaries, and Mother's Day. The ice eventually melts, but the recipient will be left with the flowers and other parts of the display to keep as decorations. 
Monique Bay's mother of two, Chris Buckley turned her hobby of keeping snails as pets into a business. When she first started a video blog about her pets and got an overwhelming response, she quickly followed the advice of her older son and moved on to TikTok where she got 30,000 followers overnight. To date, she gathered 180,000 followers on the platform next to 12,000 followers of her Instagram. Buckley then became an expert in snails, started breeding and selling the slugs in an online shop, especially popular among parents who purchased them for their children. In a warehouse, she hosts around 5,000 snails of different species, including a chatina snail as big as 25 centimeters with a weight of 600 grams. Her success came as somewhat of a surprise since she studied art and wanted to become a musician. By now, however, her business allows her to have a full-time employee and several helpers. As an influencer, Berkeley welcomes her followers to the slime side of life and gives advice on how to keep pet snails at home. Authorities in the Polish capital Warsaw captured a glimpse of the city's past when they uncovered the remains of long-lost streets buried underground during the construction of a square. Towering over the square is the Palace of Culture, the social Israeli tower gifted to the city in the 1950s by the Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin. Builders have uncovered the foundations of the buildings that line what was once Zlota Street complete with paving stones and tram tracks around 1.5 meters below the ground. Also on the side of the new square is a stone platform, which was used by communist dictatories to watch military parades. Underneath the platform are rooms which were used by leaders and which during the 1990s, following the fall of communism, were used as a nightclub. The central square, due to open next year, will be a green space in the center of the city that will reflect the layout of the old streets that once existed at the location. The tallest tree in Asia, a giant cypress currently measuring 101.2 meters and discovered in southwest China's Jizang autonomous region, is estimated to be about 1,500 years old. The record-breaking high tree called Caprissus terulosa was found at the National Nature Reserve of Yaolong Zhengbo, Grand Canyon in the Bom County during a scientific investigation led by Peking University in May. Around the tallest tree, the team found a small number of naturally dead and fallen giant trees, which serves as an important career for determining the age of these trees. The team members extracted tree rings from the fallen trees to determine their corresponding age based on the ratio of the girth to the number of the tree ranks. The tallest tree has a girth of 296 centimeters, suggesting an estimated age of about 1,500 years. Mainly distributed in southern Jizang, the Caprices Sterilosa has a narrow distribution area and a small population. It has been listed as a national first-class protected plant. All right, that concludes today's edition of Updates at Noon. In our top story, PM assures Islam will continue to be the religion of federation. Do tune in to Malaysia Tonight coming up later at 8.30 p.m. on TV1 and Saluran Berita RTM. Till then, I'm Nur Zamri, Malaysia Madani. Tekat perpaduan penuhi harapan. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.